my name's Aaron. Welcome back to my channel. How are you? I'm fantastic and I'm doing really well. And today I'm reviewing from the House of Diptyque, Oud Paleo. This is 148 pounds for 75 mil. And this is Oud Rose Vanilla Incense. It says East meets West. That tells me it's going to be a West interpretation of Middle Eastern perfumery. Oud Paleo Eau de Parfum features the interaction of wood, vanilla, rose, intertwining to create intense sillage, oud wood, one of the rarest and oldest essences in perfumery, is given pride of place. So when I always think oud wood, I mean, it is what it is, oud wood, but I immediately think of that with a Tom Ford oud wood capitalized upon it. So it's 148. Okay. Do we have a bottles of oud paleo? I think I will engage with the higher self. Let's get testing. They have a store in Covent Garden. We went in there, they were very nice, very professional, very nice. We went pushy. So let's look at the atomizer. Nice wide dispersive. This smells very familiar. Uh, really apparent. This is going to give you loads to see actually what they were saying was correct. Want to say something before we get onto the formula. There was Somebody who said, and it was a comment somewhere, I don't know, I don't read comments that often, which was why, can you stop doing oud, rose, and vanilla? I want to explain why so many oud, rose formulas are out there. And I can summarize this without babbling, is it just works. Oud is a really difficult raw material to work with. I've done a video on different types of oud, but Generally, oud can smell, it's quite a heavy smelling compound. It's very thick and balsamic. I don't think it's very pleasant to smell. Or close, the ouds that I get are very soft and rounded, and that's because they don't use oxygen when they're dealing with the compound. And as I said before, fecal oud has lots of oxygen and bacteria sort of eating it, so it releases sulfur compounds. So that's why you get the different types of ouds. And Vanilla with oud can soften it slightly and rose gives it lift and that's why there's so many oud and rose because it kind of works. Also rose compounds can give elevation and it's quite a difficult compound to give elevation through. You can do it but the rose like raw materials just work with oud. It smells like it's supposed to be together, it's very easy. Anyway, this reminds me, not exactly, in a similar direction as Dior Oud Isfahan fragrance is not the same. I want to say that, but it's kind of moving in that direction. That is using the Isu Super and then lots of Ambergris family like raw materials. And there's one called Credemba. And Credemba, it's horrible. It smells really, really horrible on its own. And Credemba, it's uh, in the Ambergris family of Isu Super Credemba uh, and Broxin. Other ambers as well. Credemba smells tinny. When you're smelling it, it's, I'm trying to really simplify what it's like. On paper, it has lots of different uses, but it smells tinny, ambergris-like raw materials in a tinny direction. And it can smell quite animalistic, but it gives you loads of diffusion. And that's what they're using within this formulation to give that diffusion is Isu Super Credemba rose-like raw materials, vanilla-like raw materials. It's settling down and it's smelling better. This smells so familiar. Initially, that was a little bit much more I'm gonna say, but that out there, but it's settling quite beautifully. But this, I know the sillage, because of how it smells initially, is gonna be nuts off this. When you are constructing perfume, when you think of the backbone, the raw materials cho chosen are incredibly important because they do things to the formula. And sometimes when you're dealing with sillage and projection, you can sacrifice softness and sensuality. And so a lot of the time, really, really good perfumery is about balancing projection, sillage, diffusion, against softness, fluffiness, that sort of familiarity. I think they're the sort of polar opposite. The more sort of softness you have to it, the, the lily of the valley raw materials, they are some musk-like raw materials, nitro musk especially, they can flatten a formulation. So getting that balance right in a formula is incredibly important. So the raw materials that are chosen within this are giving you diffusion, a sillage, a lift, and not much sort of softness to the formula. There's a tenderness to it. If you've got this, 
and try it, you smell the tinniness, and the tinniness is the if you need the alcohol which smells it's the alcohol that smells tinny, credember, all of that. It does smell incense it's got an incense nature to it. So it is fitting exactly what it's saying. This smells older than nature. I don't think this smells youthful because the amount of rose-like raw materials, I, I, think, I think it is unisex, but I think you have to love that sort of rose incense formula. I think it's blended beautifully. I think it's created beautifully. The choice of uh, naturals are key within this. The, the whole thing sort of smells finished and complete. They're using wood-like raw materials to help give that sort of incense finish. The sandalwood, the cedarwood, the aroma chemicals which are in the sound, within the sandalwood-like family as well, all of that's giving it the incense, along with sort of all the um, eugenol, benzoate, sort of raw materials, vanilla raw materials. The must choice in this is great as well. So this is a combination of must to give a metallic nature and lift. They're taking quite a dated formula, because all this can smell quite dated, it's been done again and again, and they're updating it with the, the choice of musk, giving it a metallic, up-to-date, sort of high-tech finish within it. On to my final thoughts. I'm really stuck because it smells very familiar, if I'm honest with you. It smells kind of done, where this is within, I think, everywhere. The tinny nature is sticking out a little bit too much. This is really, really personal. The way that it's projecting out, it to me, smells a little bit too harsh. And when I was going on about sort of the two sides sort of, of creating a formula, I would love this to be softened slightly. That's really personal. I would love this to be softened off, smoothed off a lot more. And I think it would have been very, very nice. It does smell very, very familiar, actually. 150 for 75 mil, yeah. I think that's sort of like the price for this sort of formula. The optimizer is good, the formula is okay. Um, I'm gonna mark it an eight out of 10. And eight out of 10 formulas are great, fine, do everything that you want. It projects beautifully, loads of CRs, are very, very nice. But they're not wowing me, they're not giving me the ooh la la sensation, they're not giving me that. That for the high marks, I kind of want to be, oh my God, that's really nice. And they generally um, inspire me to want to go, go and work and want me to create something. They inspire the creative side of my brain. This is not really doing it. I've just smelled this. It's very, very familiar and it's not giving me that. And I think eight's fair. I mean, it's a very professional company, but you know. Please leave your comments below if you can recommend something from this house. I have another one, a rose one. I love rose formulas. Uh, but if you could recommend what you think of is the best fragrances from this house, I would love to hear that because I try and do really positive reviews and nobody's really recommended this house before. And as I was going past, I thought we'd get it. But you know, there you go. So love that review, thumbs up and subscribe. More fascinating, interesting content, lots of moving hands and lots of fragrance views. Hope you're staying safe and well. See you soon.